Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. From Yahuwah, our Father, and Yahusha, he is the Mashiach, the one that carries the burden of Yah, his voice, our high priest, soon coming king. Hear, O Yeshara, Yahuwah, who is our mighty one. He is one. There is no other mighty one in existence than Yahuwah, and Yahusha is his voice. This is Brother Daoud coming to you again with the woman of virtue. This is part four, Proverbs 3130. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears Yahuwah she shall be praised. We have an example. Tamar. She did everything right. Unorthodox as it may be. What did our patriarch say? She has been more righteous than I. Now we're going to the story of our origin. This is where we come from. This is how we got here. A tale of two sisters. Let's begin. Barashiat, chapter 29, verses 1 to 4. 1. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. He was fleeing from his brother. He was also there to seek out a wife. 2. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field. And look, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks, and a great stone, a heavy stone, was upon the well's mouth. 3. And there were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. 4. And Jacob said unto them, Yo, brothers, where you come from? And they said, Of Haran are we. 5. And he said unto them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahur? And they said, Yeah, man, of course we know him. Everyone knows him. 6. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, Yes, he's okay. And behold, look over there. Here comes Rahel, his daughter. She's coming with the sheep. 7. And he said, Look, it is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water the sheep and go and feed them. He's giving them advice of what to do. How can he do that? He's a shepherd. 8. And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, and till they, a group of men, roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. 9. And while he yet spoke with them, Rahel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. She was a shepherd. 10. And it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rahel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, he said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. I see what I want. And the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near. He took out his guns. He rolled the stone from the well's mouth by himself and watered the flock of Laban his mother's brother. Rahel was standing there. She said, who is this? 
He's so handsome. He's so tall. He's so brown. Eleven. And Jacob came near. And he kissed Rahel. Oh my. A stranger is kissing me. But I think I like it. And then he lifted up his voice, and he wept. Oh, and he's so sensitive. Twelve. And Jacob told Rahel that he was her father's brother. My father never told me he had a brother named Jacob. And that he was Rebecca's son. Auntie Rebecca, you're her son? And she left the sheep at the well. And she did a Shikari Richards, and she ran to tell her father. She looked back one time to see if Jacob would follow her. Thirteen. And it came to pass, when she got to her father's house, she said, Baba, ba, ba. And Laban said, What's wrong with you, girl? Stop making all that noise in my house. Have you lost your cotton picking mine? She said, Baba, Auntie Rebecca's son is here. Jacob is here. When he heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him. He embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Now I have to tell you the story. Rahel had gotten there quite a while before Jacob arrived because she left the sheep at the well. So Jacob brought the sheep in. When he was coming down the road, Rahel had told all of the people in the village the story, and all the women were standing around. And she said, he removed that stone by himself. It usually takes three or four men to remove the stone. He so Oh, he's so handsome, he's so strong, he's so brown, and then he kissed me. Oh, all of the women just went crazy. What, girl? He kissed you? Yes, he kissed me, and then after he kissed me, he began to cry. Oh, he just took my heart because... <laughs> He's so sensitive. So after they brought Jacob to the house, they brought water. They got down on their knees and washed the dust off his feet. Then they gave him water so he could wash his body. They gave him clean clothes, robes to put on. And after he had washed, they brought him before their father, Laban, in the sitting area. And they sat down, and they're talking, and they're throwing back drinks. And all the women are in the kitchen, eavesdropping, listening in. And the women in the kitchen are saying, Oh, do you hear his voice? He's so smooth. He's so tall. He's so handsome. He's so strong. He's so brown. Then Rahel walked in and she says, and he's mine. I saw him first and he kissed me. Give me those plates. I'm the one's going to go out there to serve him. So she took the plates and Jacob and Laban are out there drinking and laughing and uh, Jacob is telling the story of his travels. And when Rahel walked into the room, everything froze. Jacob is staring at her. She's staring at him. She's just holding the plates in her hands. They're in a trance. They were awestruck at each other. Then all of a sudden a voice came out. It's her father Laban. 
Girl, what's wrong with you? Put the food down. Don't you see the man is hungry? So he broke the trance. And Rahel put the food down before Jacob. And as she was coming back up, she gave him that little look like, mm, I like you. Do you like me? <laughs> and then she got up. And she was walking away, mind you. She had cleansed herself. She had put on that perfectly fitting dress that she had. And then she walked away with that special walk. And the bubbles were going up and down and all around. And Jacob was smitten. So she walked out of the room and she goes back into the kitchen and the women start screaming. Girl, he likes you. He wants you. And Rahel said, I told you because he kissed me. Yes, he kissed me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know. He kissed me and made me whole. So, Jacob and Laban are out there, they're just drinking and they're having their good time. And Laban turns to the servants and he says, Hey, bring me the shisha. The shisha? What is the shisha? The hookah? The pipe? I'll leave it to your imagination. What they put in the pipe. So they brought him the shisha. And he lights the shisha. And he passes it to Jacob. And he says, two tokes and pass, man. So now Jacob is feeling good. Oh yeah, he's been throwing back a few drinks. Let's continue. And he told Laban all these things. What things? Well, he told him the story. Remember, he's loose now. He's telling him the story of how he arrived at Laban's house. He says, My mother, your sister was eavesdropping at my father's tent. Laban started laughing. He said, Yeah. That Rebecca is so nosy, ain't she? Ha, 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 ha. And she overheard my father saying that he was going to give Esau the birthright. And he told Esau to go out and get some venison and make him some savory meat, some curry venison. And he would pass him the birthright. When Esau left, my mother ran away. And she said, oh no, he's not going to receive the birthright. That boy is wicked. He's marrying all of these strange women. He can't lead the family. He's not a shepherd. He's a hunter. All he wants to do is party, kill, and have a good time. Plus the Aliyam told me that the elder would serve the younger. I'm going to make this happen. So she called to Jacob and she said, boy, go get me two of those kids of the goats. Oh, mommy, we're having a party. Boy, just do what I said. Go get me two kids of the goats. Jacob says, yes, mommy. He went and got the two kids of the goats. She skinned them and she put the meat in the pots and she began to prepare the curry goat, which is supposed to be curry venison. Then she took the skins and she made two sleeves. And she put him on my arms and I said, Mommy, what are these sleeves for? And she says, well, you're going in and you're going to receive the birthright and you're going to pose that you're Esau. Now go in there and get his robes. He brought them to me earlier. I was supposed to wash them. I didn't get a chance to do so. They still smell like Esau. It smells like the feel. So she made the curry. She made the sleeves. She put on robes. She prepared him to go in to his father. 
And she told him, she said, listen to me, boy. When you get in there, you cannot talk the way you speak. You have to speak like Esau. And I told her, I said, Mommy, if, if my father catches me, he's going to see me as a, a trickster, as a deceiver, and he's going to hate me. And your sister said to me, Shut up, boy. Let this transgression be upon me. Laban start laughing. Uh, 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 uh. Man, that's my sister. 14. And Laban said, Surely you are bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. In other words, you're just as tricky as me. And he abode with him the space of a month. 15. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because you are my brother, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Why did he ask him that? Well, Jacob was there for a whole month. He was out there in the fields with his servants in an advisory position. Laban saw that Jacob knew what he was doing. Everything was put in order. Everything prospered at Jacob's hands. So he said, tell me, what shall your wages be? How much shall I pay you? 16. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was La'a, not Le, Le, A. There's no A in Hebrew. That is a rough sound. It is La'a. And the name of the younger was Rahel. 17. And La'a was tender-eyed. When I was in school, we had discussions about this. We wanted to know what this tender-eyed thing was. Some would say that one of her eyes went to the left or to the right. You know, they weren't perfectly, you know, lined up. Some say he was, she was cross-eyed. Some people said that she was just calm and had a quiet demeanor. But now that we know the process of translation, transliteration, and transcription, and we have the ancient text before 585 years before the Mashalya come on the earth. Now we can go and check everything out ourselves. And the word that is used is wa, ayanya, la, a. Wa, add secure hook. We're going to use secure. Ayan is I or look. And when you add the ya at the end, it makes it. It stretches out the word like instead of look, it would be le king. Okay, so let me give you my translation. And La'a was good looking, but Rahel was beautiful and well favored. 18. And Jacob loved Rahel and said, I will serve you seven years for Rahel your younger daughter, seven years. Ladies, what is your worth? You cannot allow yourself to be given away for nothing. Seven years he worked to be with this woman and you're going to sell yourself for nothing it may be too late for you because once your virginity is gone that's it it'll never return your worth is diminished but you still have daughters teach them help them Help them to overcome where you failed. 19. And the bond said, it is better that I give her to you, a family member, than that I should give her to another man, some people with some different customs. So stay with me. 20. And Jacob served seven years for Rahel. 
he paid an absorbent price for her. We're talking hard labor here. Just think being in construction for seven years and your pay is the one you love. And they seemed unto him but a few days because he loved Rahel so much. This is a love story. 21. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, man. My seven years are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. Do you see that? They didn't have sex. They didn't jump the gun. They wanted to. But Rahel knew the family traditions. She was truly a woman of virtue. She said, I cannot be with you, Jacob, before that time. They have to put down the sheet so that I may have a token of my virginity. If I be with you before that time, I will be ashamed. The whole village will talk about me. And Jacob says, I will wait for you. I love you so much. 22. And Laban said, Okay, hold your horses, Jacob. Our traditions is that we have to have a ceremony, a feast. So he gathered together all the men of the place and they made a feast. 23. And it came to pass in the evening. Okay, let me paint the picture. All of the men of the city were there. They had plenty of drinks, plenty of food. Yeah. Everybody brought their shisha. They were giving it to Jacob. They said, hey man, try my shisha. Two tokes and pass. Jacob was drinking, smoking, eating, laughing, dancing, having a good time. Man, he was totally inebriated. That's exactly what Laban wanted. So then Jacob went to the tent. They already had the sheet laid. Mm -hmm. And Jacob laid upon the sheet. He couldn't see. Everything was dark. Then Lebron brought Jacob's bride in. La'a, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob. And he went in unto her. 24. And Laban gave his daughter La'a Zalpa, his maid for a handmaid. That's her dowry. 25. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was La'a. Okay, let me put something in your mind that you're probably not thinking about. La'a didn't want to participate in this. But they're women of virtue. They follow instructions. She did what her father said. Her father told her, you go sleep with him. She said, no. Rahel is the one he wants. He worked seven years for her. He didn't work for me. I'm going to be seen as a trickster. Girl, listen to what I said. I need Jacob. My fields. My animals. Everything prospers in his hand. We need to keep him here. But Baba, I don't want to do this. This is not right. Shut up and do what I said. While he's taking La'a in 
to Jacob. Rahel is back in her tent, losing her mind. Why? 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 No! No! <sighs> and it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was La'a when he turned over and he looked. He said, what are you doing here? Where's Rahel? My father made me come in and lie with you. I'm so sorry, Yaka. Please forgive me. I had to do what he told me to do. He's my father. So Yaka went out and he said to Laban, What is this thing that you have done unto me? Did I not serve you seven years for Rahel? Wherefore then, why have you tricked me? And Laban said, You don't remember? I told you you were bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. You come from my sister. Hmm. This is what we do. Can you call this karma? Is this payback for the trick that they played on Yatsak? I would think so. Then the bond said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. I'm going to speak on behalf of our patriarch. Our father, Yaka, this is what he said. Why didn't you tell me that from the beginning? Continue to part five. The story continues. Shalom.